guys it's me Kara a lot has happened this past week a lot of fuckery a lot of sadness and just a lot of hilarity so let's just get this out of the way Nick Young and Iggy Azalea are no longer together and the reason for that is because Nick Young cheated on Iggy a couple of months ago Nick Young was caught cheating he was recorded by D'Angelo Russell and everyone was dragging D'Angelo Russell because, oh, bro, Cole, you should have just let Nick cheat in peace. And it was just so funny because people were just tearing Kalani to pieces when they thought that she cheated on Kyrie with Party Next Door. But then when it's obvious that Nick Young is cheating on Iggy, oh, it's okay. You know, men are going to cheat regardless. And it's just evident misogyny because it's like oh yeah men are supposed to cheat men are supposed to get their dicks wet and you know we can't say nothing about it we can't say no we can't say you know hey it's your fault we can't have you take responsibility people expect men to cheat even women expect men to cheat that's why you got so many posts saying things like oh if you text text my man what you doing later you know he's gonna take me over to beat your ass well bitch if your man is sending me text um, messages and giving me his number hell yeah i'm gonna text him because i'm gonna think we're talking you know it's common sense and if i and if a bitch comes over to my house over some bullshit like i'm not even gonna like fry her i'm likely gonna call the cops on her but if she touches me i'm gonna like defend myself but you know what you know i'm too grown for this shit i'm just gonna call the cops on you you know i don't give a fuck i'm petty like that i'm the type of person where if you put your hands on me and you beat me up or some shit it's okay baby because you won't get the cops called on you because i don't play that bullshit you know you gonna at least uh, reap the repercussions of this shit anyway like i said people expect men to cheat so much that when they do cheat it's not a problem but when women cheat oh my god we're not important you know like what does that say about us and i'm sorry it's like a mess back here you know i haven't made up my bed um it's it's all right but i just want you to know don't get mad if you think my room's a mess right now because i got crates with all my books and stuff back there i need to like clean my room because i've been needing to do that for like months but i just haven't got the chance but anyway, when women cheat, oh my God, how could you? You know, men are so important. You know, men don't like the fact that maybe they ain't shit. Maybe they're replaceable. You know, it's okay to replace women and to leave them for other women. But maybe if we leave you for another man, then it's like, oh my God, what does that say about my manhood? I don't give a fuck. But like I said, people were just dragging Iggy, shading her, and people were making excuses like, well, Iggy's racist, and she ruined hip-hop, and I'm just like, if it were someone else, if it were anyone else, you'd be saying the same thing. Because the same people that were sitting there saying that Iggy deserves to get cheated on say the same thing about black women. Like, I had a couple of people mad at me because I wasn't trying to side with Nick Young or his ex-baby mama because they did a wrong thing. They did something that was wrong. Like, Nick Young's ex is going to take to Instagram and say, yeah, bitch, you should have known that we were together this whole entire time. And she was talking to Iggy. And I think, bitch, how are you going to willingly be someone's side and then get mad when the main is taken to Twitter expressing her sorrow, her grief over someone that she thought she loved cheating on her and you're mad because she may have known that you guys were sneaking around her. What? What? That doesn't make any sense, boo-boo. Because, like, I'm not going to sit here and willingly sleep with a man who is engaged to a whole woman and then say, well, you should have known because at the end of the day, you knew that they were engaged. But that did not stop you from sleeping with your ex. So I don't understand how you're going to try to blame Iggy. I don't even like Iggy and I think that's fucked up. You know, I say all the time, don't blame the other woman. But when you want to be shady and take to Twitter and try to throw shots at the woman that you don't like because you're sleeping with her boyfriend, that makes you just as wrong, I feel. I feel like if you're going to be shady about it and you're going to open your mouth and try to like sell your story to tabloids to make a buck off of someone else's pain, I feel like you deserve to get dragged. And I'm not going to sit there and say it was all right for Iggy to sit there and say, how are you going to bring a child into this world during all these circumstances? Because you know what? You can't tell a woman what to do with her body. You know, if she's going to have a child, she's going to have a child. She has a right to have a child. You know, their child is four months old, apparently. And it's just a mess. 
I feel bad for Iggy. You know, I don't really have sympathy for um, Kiana Green, who is Nick Young's ex, because I feel like if you're going to willingly sleep with someone who is in a relationship, you can't get mad when the woman is like, this man is a fuck boy and I didn't know. And you want to sit there and defend him. Like, you won't sit here and try to make excuses for this man. And I think that's fucked up. I do because so many people have even said that you were the other woman a lot of times. Nick Young was engaged to a whole other woman. And you came into the picture and he got you pregnant. And then he broke off the engagement with her and got with you. So I don't understand. I don't understand because if he's claiming all these non-black women but he's sleeping with you on the side... What does that say about his opinion on you? I'm not even going to say what does that say about you, but what does that say about how he feels about you? It says that he doesn't have respect for you. He doesn't have enough respect to claim you as his own, to show you off and to say, hey, this is my girlfriend, this is my baby mama, this is the mother of my child, and I love her. He can't even do that because he doesn't feel that way about you. And I'm not trying to laugh at you and say, oh, it's your fault. I'm just saying, look at who you're trying to claim. Look at who you're trying to claim as a prize. Do you really want someone like that that's not even going to show you all, that's going to keep you in the dark while proposing to all these non-black women and you think that you won something because he was sleeping with you? Because I'm not going to sit there and think that's okay. I'm not trying to shame side chicks, but why would you want to be with someone? If like I feel like if you got feelings for someone and you want to be with someone and you want to have a relationship, why would you want to settle with being a second choice? Because obviously you want a relationship. So why do you want to be someone's second choice? Why can't you be someone that is having someone's all? Why can't you be someone's all? You know, I understand it's hard. People get into these situations and I'm not trying to victim blame because a lot of niggas be trying to pressure us to be side chicks. Like, oh, it's complicated and I really care about you. But once you realize what it is, you can't really sit there and try to blame the woman for getting cheated on because that's internalized misogyny as well because that's still blaming the other woman. Oh, well, her pussy wasn't good enough and I could give him what she couldn't give him. No, I think it's both stupid. But, you know, I'm not going to invest my time into this bullshit because it's just a bunch of fuckery. Um, Nick Young is trash. Um, that's all I have to say for now. Another thing that happened last week... Um, Saturday, you know, this past Saturday, Eli Wiesel, a Jewish Holocaust survivor, passed away at 87. He um, was um, in the Auschwitz concentration camp, and after his story, he wrote a book about it called Night. I read it in high school. That book just made me so angry. Like, you know, I read a lot of things about oppression, like slavery, the Holocaust, just you know, genocide and stuff like that. And when I read it, it just made me so angry. You know, just a lot of terrible things happened in that book. That just made me feel so, like, angry, you know, just for humanity. But Eli Wiesel was a great man. He had a lot of great things to say. He stood up for social justice, a huge influence to the Jewish community. And I shared a couple of that on my blog, on Twitter, and on Facebook, and as well as my Instagram and I had a couple of people, however, come to me like, oh, why should we care? You know, we're not Jewish. And I just feel like, how can you be so ignorant? Like, yeah, people are primarily going to talk about issues that affect their community. But at the same time, you can't sit here and say we shouldn't care because we're not a part of that community. Because we ain't going to sit there and act like we understand what it's like because I'm definitely not Jewish. But there are black Jewish people. You know, you don't understand that. I have so many black people follow me from all types of the margin from all axes of oppression i have jewish followers i have non-black jewish followers at the end of the day how you gonna sit there and tell me that i shouldn't care about someone that talked about oppression you know from their community and to sit there and say you know it doesn't affect us because i feel like there are some of us who want people to hear our story you know who want people to know about all types of black figures but then when it comes to other people that may not be black, who may be in other POC groups or in other religious groups, you know, that were oppressed, people are like, oh, who cares? I feel like we should care about all. And I'm not sitting there trying to say that, you know, I agree with non-black POC that say, you know, we should be standing up for other POC's rights or be talking about their issues. 
But when we do talk about these issues, there are some of us that will be like, well, who cares? Because, you know, we're not like a part of that group. I think that's ignorant. You know, we can't speak for an oppression that's not ours, but we can like, you know, share things that, you know, are a part of that oppression. We can talk about it. You know, we can work together to sit there and say, oh, we shouldn't care. We ain't Jewish. I'm like, you know how I am. I talk about this stuff all the time. You know, anti-Semitism is a problem. And for people to sit there and say, you know, oh, like people like Eli Wiesel or Holocaust survivors or Jewish people are only in the limelight because of white privilege, which that's so wrong. You know, I'm not going to get into it right now, but you just have no idea. But like I said, um, Eli Wiesel was one of my influences when it came to social justice. He said the quote, Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the oppressed. We should always take sides. If you're silent, then you took the side of the oppressor because there are so many people who feel like, well, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say anything. So that helps. It doesn't help anyone but the person that is oppressing. You know, I I'm not here for this let's be silent and let's just shut the fuck up about these issues. I'm not. But like I said, um, um, you know, my condolences goes out to Eli Wiesel's family and all that he's influenced, the community, everyone involved. Oh, let's talk about Stacey Dash real quick. Stacey Dash. Now, normally I don't get involved with slander Stacey Dash, but I just felt like this was so ignorant. I had to say something. How the fuck are you going to say anyone is a house Negro, field Negro, when you are the biggest coon that we have ever seen on TV, you call Jesse Williams a Phil slave or basically imply that he was like a house Negro that he was shucking and jiving on TV after his BET award speech. And I just feel like, bitch, you just want attention because you always say something, you know, out your neck just so people can talk about you. And I feel like we shouldn't even just give Stacey Dash any attention because she's going to keep saying some stupid ass shit because she wants people to talk about her. And the same thing with that Tommy Lauren woman, the blind woman who's 23 years old. I thought she was much older because I feel like no one can be this young and this stupid. Like this, like what I mean to say is no one can be this young and this so educated on racism. Like she is an educated racist. Like so many people are saying, oh, she's a dumb blonde. She's a bimbo. No. No say what she actually is she's a racist she's just as racist as bill o'reilly all these white men trump everyone so to sit here and make it like oh she's barbie doll like don't try to sugarcoat it no i feel like you know we should treat her the racist woman that she is you know i just feel like you're gonna sit here and get mad over a speech that has nothing to do with you and uh, get so angry that you're fucking red in the face like why are you so mad and i feel like she was mad because she knows that jesse williams is biracial she knows that he has a white mom and that he's light-skinned and you know has blue eyes and could you know benefit from whiteness and can cater to whiteness but he won't do it and i feel like that's the real reason why white people are mad because jesse williams has light skin privilege and that he is in proximity to whiteness but he's not going to like put whiteness first and that's the thing and i feel like that's why she was really mad because like you know how dare this little light skin little biracial person you know like uh tell us about ourselves you know how how dare he i i feel like that's what it was and I just feel like people just need to shut the fuck up. People have been trying to get this man fired. And this is just like when you go to McDonald's and you acting all ignorant and you wrong. You harassing the employee and you like, give me my manager or uh, get me the manager. And the employee goes to get the manager, but the manager is just going to say the same thing the employee told you. You know, it's the same thing. You don't complain about Jesse Williams to the creators of Grey's Anatomy, not knowing that his boss is a black woman, Shonda Rhimes, and that the head of ABC is a black woman. So what the fuck are you trying to do? Like, Jesse Williams ain't going nowhere. Like, I wasn't even scared because it's just, just ignorance. 